Hi guys, we have a lot to cover today. So let me start by um, addressing some concerns of people who are, are watching. Thank you for watching. Um, in the last video, I had said that the moat is what we want in our eye. It's the new wine. But then when I went to the definition in the concordance, it said it was chaff, a dry twig um, to wither up. Okay, so we can, guys, when it comes to the verses that we are looking at and the words we are looking at, we have to, I am following spirit um, and where it's leading me. Okay, so if you look at it this way, moat to be withered up, then you don't want the moat in your eye and you don't want a beam in your eye because it's like a sliver or a thorn. On the other hand, moat means new wine, which is what you want to have, and beam means to shine. So you also want that. Okay, so everything in scripture, first of all, the especially the Hebrew, I don't know much about the Greek, but the Hebrew is such an epic poem. It is, it is literal poetry. You can't imagine um, the connections. It's, it's just crazy. And also, um, everything in a verse is related, it sounds ridiculous, by osmosis. Okay, and what direction the meaning is going to take, it can go either way. There are so many words, like forge, that mean one thing and then mean its complete opposite. Or in Hebrew, there's a word that means curse and it means blessing. So what we have to do is follow our spiritual instinct. What is this verse telling you spiritually? And this is how you start to put things together. So whether it's a moat or a beam in your eye, you don't want it. But whether it's a moat or a beam in your eye, you do want it. Okay, it really doesn't matter. We're, and because we're talking about the new wine and the ripe vine and the clusters of grapes, um, the moat is something we want in our eye at this point, okay? And, and it, it, we also want a beam in our eye. This is why we cannot judge. This is why we cannot judge because um, it could be a good thing. What it appears on the surface means nothing underneath, okay? So this is why you can't judge. There's nothing that doesn't circle back around in Scripture. There's not one thing. In fact, I guarantee you, six or seven years ago, I had a interpretation of the verses about Pentecost as a negative thing. And that is because there were tongues, cloven tongues of fire. First of all, cloven is unclean in the Bible. Tongues of fire is a venomous serpent. And so at one point, I would have looked at Pentecost as a negative thing and drunken on new wine, being chaff and withered and, and not a good thing, okay? But here we are today looking at those scriptures as something good. Everything, I'm telling you, everything circles back around and goes in circles, which is why you need to be connected spiritually and let the Spirit speak to you about what it wants to teach you. The same thing is happening with the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and I'm talking about Judah and the Lion's whelp. And if we look at Judah as Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? We're going to say, well, this is describing Jesus, and it's not a negative thing. On the contrary, at this point, because... Jesus, that image of Jesus is an image that religion has created in their own minds. Okay, so if, um, if people could see Jesus clearly, they, they see him differently. Um, so what religion has done, they have put Jesus on a pedestal and he's shining bright white linen he deserves all glory and praise. He is um, this idol. He is an idol. 
when on earth and in spirit, Jesus is the exact opposite. He's humble. He retreated from the crowds. He said, don't tell anybody when he would heal people because he didn't want the glory, praise, and worship. And at this point, we can say he didn't want the praise because that means Hallel, Lucifer, or Judah, the prince of this world. Okay? So everything circles back around, guys. This is why we need to be led of the Spirit. Okay? Wait till you see what I have for you today. It's absolutely astounding to me, and it, it's really, really cool. So um, first, I want to go to our dictionary. I was looking up, first take note, feather means horny structure, okay? I was looking up the word scale because there are scales there that are being patinaed here in our picture, okay? So um, I wanted to kind of show you everything, you know, that scale means. It means just so many things, and it's important to our picture. One of the thin, flat, horny plates. Okay, and did you see feather was horny? So we, we are talking about feathers, too, when we're talking about scales. Um, lizards, snakes, pangolins, one of the hard, bony, or dentinal plates, okay, which would be talking about teeth. So I think that's important. Forming the covering of certain animals as fishes, um, any thin plate-like piece, which reminds me of the firmament is a thin plate also. Flakes that peel off from a surface as from the skin. This is why we are Leviathan too. Um, it, our skin is related linguistically to the snake, the scales of the snake, okay? to remove the scales from your eyes, to remove scales and thin layers, to shed dentistry, to remove calculus from the teeth, to skip, um, to cover with an incrustation, which is the exact word we had for patina, incrustation, okay? It also means, I wanna show you, scale. Okay, scales of a balance, guys, because now we're talking about the flat patina pan. It means uh, it's the same as a balance pan. Okay, Libra the scales. Um, scale pan to weigh as in scales, which is kind of like judgment, right? Which is what we can relate this time period to. Scale, a succession or progression of steps or degrees. Um, a series of marks laid down at determinate distances for purpose of measurement to climb as if by a ladder, to climb up or over, um, to climb, ascend, and mount. And the actual definition here is ladder, rung of a ladder, ladder and stairs. And it's all starting to come together here. Um, look at this. One of the root words of scale is shell. And we have our oyster shell in that picture with the pearl inside. All of these things are related. There is a definition, and I missed it, where it means let me read it to you. I do have it here. Definition number three, a bud scale. Leaf covered with hair, wax, or resin. A leaf covered with hair, wax, or resin. So this is why all of our foliage in the picture, okay? It's all related. They're all the same things, okay? Okay, 
When we are talking about our ladder, we are talking about scales, um, I'm sorry, scales, layers of the skin to become encrusted. Guys, this is the patina that I'm talking about, and it means that we are at full age. Just as we talked about in the last video, the wine is at full age. If I said old, I'm going to correct myself because it's not old age, and there's a very distinct difference, and this is what we're going to talk about today, and it's really amazing. So as I was talking to you yesterday, um, I received the word bustling. And, okay, music too, okay, scales and music. Um, and that word means to be thriving or energetic, sorry, thriving or energetic activity, stir or ferment. The root idea of the word wine in Hebrew is to bubble up and to ferment, effervesce. The, those exact words, okay? To abound or teem with life, display abundance, okay? So I followed the word team, and team means to empty or pour out, to pour in torrents. So Aquarius, again, is pouring out that deluge in the picture above, the waterfall, um, the flood, the cataract, okay? And the root word of empty is <laughs> right here. Origin of empty. Look at this. Must, which is our new wine, and meat. So I followed meat because we did have, we were talking about strong meat versus milk to come upon into the presence of. And the definition I want to show you is right here. Face to face, right here. The eye, to, to eye somebody is to meet somebody. Right here. Mathematics. It's an intersection. So I went to this intersection in mathematics. It means to meet. And intersection in mathematics, 3A, also called meat or product. The set of elements that two or more sets have in common. This symbol is our rainbow. Do you see my cursors right on it? It's our rainbow. And then look at this definition, the greatest lower bound of two elements in a lattice. What? <laughs> I had no idea that lattice was a mathematical term or that our rainbow was talking about something mathematical. But let's go there because you guys, we have a great teaching coming. So stick with me guys, okay? Lattice. So I thought, I've never looked up the word lattice even though we've had it many times. So I thought I would look it up. Here we go. A structure of crossed wooden or metal strips usually arranged to form a diagonal pattern of open spaces between the strips. A window gate, which is what we have in our picture above, or the consistency, con or the light consisting of such a structure. Physics. Then we have, let me scoot it up for you guys. Crystal, crystallography, crystals, the study of crystals, an arrangement in space of isolated points, lattice points, these are where the lattice meets, the intersection of the lattice points, so this finger and this finger, okay, lattice points in a regular pattern, showing the positions of atoms, molecules, or ions in the structure of a crystal. So I went to look up crystal, 
and what we have clear transparent mineral or glass resembling ice so now we're talking about our firmament and also it's our cornea it's our eye that's seen clearly and not opaque with a cataract remember it's our eye that's seen clearly okay a solid body having a characteristic internal structure and enclosed by symmetrical arranged plane surfaces. Okay. Keep this in mind because now we're going to go to our rainbow structure in mathematics. It showed that rainbow structure. What we are talking about is a parabola. And I wish we had a picture of it, you guys. So let me find one for you. Um, the structure that is uh, like our rainbow in mathematics where the intersection is. Okay, can you see? Let's click on it. It's a parabola. Do you see this picture here? I hope you can see it. So it comes around like this. The points of intersection, guys, they were labeled for me in one of the pictures I was looking at. This point right here is called the vertex. It's a point, um, the highest point of the parabola, okay? And then there's a point down here that's called the focus. Uh, so it's our eye, it's our rainbow above, it's our eye, it's our eye over here, and we're looking at the vertex. So vertex, I went to look up vertex because I was studying this shape, and okay, vertex. The highest point of something, the summit, the top, the crown or top of the head, craniometry, the highest point on the mid-sagittal plane of a skull or head, viewed from the left side when the skull or head is whatever. It's right here, the vertex of the head. If we get to the root here, we're going to get to the word vortex. Vertex and vortex, a whirling mass of water, especially one in which a force of suction operates as a whirlpool, a whirling mass of air, especially one in the form of a visible column or spiral. So if you can look at our picture, we've got a vortex at the vertex over here. Okay, so this is what all of this is talking about. A whirling mass of fire or flame, because that's our shine. Um... Violent activity, irresistible force, something drawing into its powerful current, everything that surrounds it. Very powerful, guys. Vortex. Okay. So when we were at um, crystal, the, the definition of the word crystal in the electronics department, okay, so instead of math, mathematics or crystallography it said electronics and a crystal in electronics is a quartz crystal ground in the shape of a rectangular parallelepiped which vibrates strongly at one frequency when electric voltages of that frequency are placed across opposite sides of our shoulder blades there, used to control the frequency of an oscillator as of a radio transmitter. We are vibrating crystals, oscillating, oscillate, a circuit that produces an alternating output current of a certain frequency determined by the characteristics of the circuit component oscillate to cause to move to and fro to vibrate to cause to move to and fro 
Now we're talking about crystals being at the right frequency to be able, there's an oscillation inherently in these crystals. And it means to move to and fro, to swing to and fro, to cause to move to and fro and to vibrate. So to swing to and fro also as a pendulum does, which is very important. Guys, stick with me. It's going to come together and you're going to be amazed. To swing. Oh, by the way, the root word of the word parabola, which is the U-shaped thing in mathematics that has the vertex and the focus, is a parable. That's the root word, parable. So these stories, again, guys, being led of the Spirit through these stories is going to bring us to such spiritual truth, such amazing truth of the divine. Okay, swing. To cause to move to and fro, sway or oscillate. To cause to move in, an al in alternate directions or in either direction around a fixed point on an axis or a line of support. An axis, you guys. We are swinging on that vine around the axis. And it's because there... <laughs> That axis is the spine. Remember that shaft is the spine? To move or sway to and fro, a pendulum or other suspended object. Okay, guys. So if you will picture the axis and then that vine around it, we are oscillating to and fro, swinging to and fro. It's a vibration here. Something that a crystal does. Swinging like a pendulum, okay? In fact, it says pendulum and bell. Um, the center piece of the bell that swings back and forth, okay? So I went to look up paralip... I had it. Paralipipid, which it was found in our definition of crystal. Okay. Parallelopiped is how you pronounce it. Okay. A prism with six faces. A prism with six faces. A prism, when the light shines in it, makes a rainbow. Now we're talking about crystals and prisms. Six faces. Guys, will you please look at the scale of the serpent in that eye? The scales are six-faced scales. And I didn't know how to draw them, so I had to look them up. Because I didn't know how to draw snake scales, okay? But I knew they had to be on that picture. They are six, there are parallelopipeds. That's what they are. Okay, scales of the eyes, you guys, scales of the skin, this is, this is, we are prisms, we are crystals, but it gets so much better. So, as you know, down the spine, that's our axis, we have the seven energy centers that I've been talking about. Some people say there's more. Uh, I haven't been given that knowledge, so I'm going to say seven. So I looked up the word chakra because they are often depicted as a wide variety of colors like crystals, like the seven colors of the rainbow in the prism. Gemstones, prisms, um, all of these things were coming to my mind. Seven major energy centers of the Bible. And what does chakra mean? Wheel and circle. Okay. There, okay, 
hold on, I have more. In my um, crystal, there's in that definition, there's the definition of clear ice, which we've had, the frost, rock crystal to freeze, to freeze, uh, crystal, okay? Detector, crystal detector, a detection of radio signals. Guys, this is our frequency that is causing us to oscillate like a crystal and vibrate, okay? Under the word crystal, I had the word piezoelectric. Of course, I didn't know what that meant, so I had to look it up. Piezoelectric was found in one of those definitions, okay? The property exhibited by some non-conducting crystals of becoming electrically polarized when mechanically strained and of becoming mechanically strained when an electric field is applied. Guys, under all of this, piezo means to press, to stamp. It means to stamp, stamp, like a press. What are we doing up on that bridge but stamping, stomping? Remember our feet, trampling? Okay. And then I think it's all the way down right here. The generation of an electric charge in certain non-conducting materials, such as quartz, crystals, and ceramics. I promise you that ceramics means horn. If you want me to take you there, I will. But look up the one instance of horn in Greek, in the New Testament. One instance. And it's keros. It's... It's keras, I'm sorry. It's Sarah. Try Sarah tops, meaning three horns. Ceramics are horns. And all of these things we have growing out of our head are horns, you guys. Everything around that eye, everything around that crown is horny. The feathers, the scales, all of it is based on this material, ceramic. Quartz crystals is now also what we have sitting at the crown of our head in the picture above. There's an electric transmission going on here between either side of the bridge on the shoulders, and it's causing the crystals in us to oscillate. Now, my intuition is telling me that these crystals are the energy centers, that they are structured after my research, that our energy centers are structured similarly to th these crystals. Okay. So we're halfway there. Okay. To turn. All of this is based on electrical circuitry. Circuit means to turn. Okay, guys? Vertebrae. Vert. Vertebrae. The exact meaning of the word is to turn, vert, vertebrae. In fact, our spine is also like a ladder, the rungs of a ladder. This is our ascending, the scale. Okay, so we're talking all about the spine, all about the serpent, all about the kundalini, all about the chakras, all about the crystal energy centers of the body. Any bones or segments composing the spinal column, cylindrical body, and an arch. I didn't know about this arch, but here it is. Okay. The spinal cord passes. There is something going on here. In a voltage of electricity, this is intuitive, okay? There is a circling of the... Um, energy. It's a circling of the energies in that electric, magnetic, whatever kind of um, power it is. And our spine has the same power. It has the same definition. This is something also that our spine is doing. 
okay? Very powerful. The root word of piezo electric, right? Piezo is to press or stamp. The root word of press is presto, which is magic, presto, right? I think. And it means quick, at hand, fast, ready to hand, present. Okay. So I had to confirm that what I was seeing was correct, you guys, because I've, I've never come across this idea before. And so I searched crystals in the human body as if what? You know, are, are there crystals in our spine? And this is something I don't know about. Um, so I went to this website, and you can't read it. It's too small. But it says, the key to understanding the assimilation of energy into our physical structure is through the awareness of our bodies as a series of synchronous, interacting crystal structures. The human body on this level is a linkage of oscillating solid and liquid crystals that form an overall energy pattern for the total body. Each organ, gland, nerve system, cell, and protein structure, that's our scales, you guys. It's our eyes, it's our hair, it's our skin, these protein structures. Even the tissue salts in the body shows a level of organization with some degree of crystalline function. Um, there's a guy who has pointed out that the human energy field consists, no, exists as an array of oscillating energy points that have a layered structure and a definite symmetry, right? That's the axis and that's the parabola. It's based on a point of symmetry. Uh, one axis and two sides, but they're equal, equal sides. And that these properties fulfill the definition of a normal crystal in material form. Okay. Apparently, our spine has crystalline centers. They're the energy centers of the chakra. And they are like gemstones, quartz, right? Beautiful prisms that shine the rainbow. Okay, piezoelectric, here we go. Materials exposed to a fairly constant electrical field tend to vibrate at a precise frequency with little variation, making them useful as time-keeping devices. Okay, so this is the most profound thing I, I think I've learned so far. This is the idea that, that, I, that I'm just going to give to you guys, okay? Crystals, which are in our spine, remember, ha they oscillate, they vibrate with an energetic frequency, and they will, over time, very, very slowly lose some of that vibration. But they are so accurate, you guys. They are so accurate in their oscillating, in their vibrating, in their moving to and fro and swinging around the vine that they are used in timepieces, in watches, quartz crystals. And this is how the watch keeps time. It's by the natural oscillation of the crystal. Once the crystal reaches a certain age, the crystal will no longer deplete its oscillating speed. So there are several years, God knows, I have no clue, several years where this oscillating crystal will lose time. It will slow down in its vibrating. 
but then it reaches a full age, a, mat a mature age, and it will no longer lose its vibrating capacity. It will stay exactly the same, oscillating at exactly the same frequency for the rest of eternity. This is us. We will eventually reach a full age. Our new wine, our ripe grapes will be ripened and then they will never lose time any further. So intuitively, I kept getting the phrase, keeping time, keeping time. We all know that the orchestra is in harmony, perfect pitch and tone. And so we are keeping the scale of the music perfectly, right? Perfect time, keeping time, keeping time. We're keeping time. But guys, it doesn't mean keeping time like this. It, I, had to, I actually had to go look up the word keep because it, I had to grasp this and I'm getting chills now. Okay, keep, we are holding in our possession time. Holding in our possession time itself. Okay, this is the idea I get. It's on two levels. Spiritually, it's, in, it's eternal. It means it will always be in tune with the flow of God physically. We don't age. Okay. Rewind it. And I am speaking correctly. I'm not making an error. Physically, age is not, we are keeping time, holding it possessing it, time. Okay, <clears throat> we have reached a full age. We have reached a maturity. And now, like elves, we don't mature any longer. We don't. <clears throat> so this is the teaching. Aging is a reality of the physical world only. Okay? Now, if we don't believe in the physical, because we don't here, we don't believe its principles or anything that it's based on, we can live, like our forefathers, to 900 years old. Okay? That's it. I cannot expound on that because I am just recently grasping it myself, comprehending it myself. Keepers of time, think about it. Holding time. Holding time, that's it. No more decay. No more decay. Decay, you guys, is related to the word corruption. Corrupt. Corrupt, it literally means to decay. So, if you are corrupt, you will decay. But if you're sewn back together, you won't decay. Now, one other thing that's interesting is the people that are using quartz crystals to keep time, watchmakers or whatever it is, they will sometimes artificially heat the crystal 
until it reaches its age of fullness. I don't know what they call it, but the, I'm using our biblical teachings, the full age. No longer the babe suckling the milk. It's the full age. They will heat it until it reaches that point so that it's even more accurate in keeping time. Possessors of time, keepers of time. This is, this is the difference, one of the differences in our time shift, in our two different timelines. We have been heated far enough to reach our full age. I, I can't wait to learn more. I don't know what I'll be bringing you in the next video, but this is fascinating, amazing. N not only the time thing, it's that there's crystalline structures in the body, that we are literally prisms, that all of these pictures are not for naught, that they have so much tremendous um, meaning. So it's so exciting to me. I hope it is to you guys too. I know these vi videos are tedious, but if you want these understandings, because they are the understandings of eternity, they're the understandings of truth, they're the understandings of divinity, of what we truly are, then, then stick with me, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.